Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 has been out for nearly two weeks, and I finally was able to digest everything that they did well and what they have done poorly. That being said, we'll be looking at everything from camos to progression to maps and everything in between. I'll have time is bookmarked below, so if you aren't interested in a certain section, you can just skip it. Again, thanks so much for clicking on the video, and if you liked my content, make sure to subscribe, and maybe tomorrow I won't eat Fruity Pebbles out of a coffee mug since I have no bowls. I'm not going to beat up a dead horse here because it's straight buns. We all know it. Again, Hulu and the Disney Devils incepted this demonic creation to press us gamers from easily seeing one another online. There was clearly not a lot of thought here with their menu and lobby optimization organization. And there is another issue with attachments in the UI not being easily visible to see what level you need to get your gun to in order to unlock it or something else. But I'll get more into that when we reach the gunsmith. And my final point, and I know it's not really UI, but do we really need our characters all animated doing our basic animations in a lobby? It adds so little to the game and I would rather just see call signs and emblems. If someone wanted to see their character, they would simply hover over you and look at it like they did in Ghost. I feel like this is a much better system and the current system just makes my game lag out the ass and I have a fucking NASA computer for a gaming setup. It's another year of this operator choosing that I know they'll add more to, but come on, man. These operators are committing acts of terrorism to my eyes, and everyone looks the damn same. I have a bigger issue in games at seeing enemies that are too hard to distinguish due to all these characters having very few distinguishing features and just a lack of a red dot until they updated it, but still, it's, it's very hard to distinguish certain characters. I think it's cool that we can choose our own character with more player expression, but it falls short in the end. Call signs and emblems make a return once again in the most underwhelming way possible. They seem to be shrinking in visibility as the games have been progressing and in COD's latest installment, you barely even notice them. I mean, come on, you can't see them when someone calls in a streak. There isn't a list of visible objectives for challenges to get calling cards. I swear they have more pride emblems than actual ones. And I swear to God, if you say the campaign gives you some, I'm going to flip my gourd. A gourd is like one of those vegetable things that are like at Thanksgiving, along with your racist uncle and SJW aunt. Both the call sign and the emblem are staples in COD multiplayers, and I'm sad to see them have less of an integration than in past games. Hopefully they'll change this, but it's one of many missed opportunities for the game. When it comes to loadouts and choices in this game, I'm happy to say that there are a ton of different guns to play around with in, in the game. Similar to Modern Warfare 2009, everything is pretty strong in this game. Unlike Modern Warfare 2019, the game has a large amount of viable, quick-killing guns, which I'm really happy about. This makes the experience more enjoyable for not only sweat lowers, but myself included. The progression system, as I've voiced in a previous video, is divisive because it only allows you to stick towards a certain line to get certain guns. Getting certain attachments or guns can be frustrating, but I have since enjoyed playing different guns. Not that I am happy about working down different lines or different types of guns, but definitely spices up the gameplay. Not saying I wouldn't mind going back to the old version of just raw leveling up my account and the gun levels to unlock certain attachments and guns, but it's not that bad and we've got what we asked for and I can't be happier with, with this aspect of the game. Let's talk about Gunsmith real quick because I'm torn on this freaking choose your own adventure attachment system. On one hand, it allows every player to create their own favorite builds. You and I can make the most goofy, ah looking firearm the world has ever seen. There's practically infinite freedom with all the different attachments and the newly added gun tuning which turned into a nice surprise when I finally maxed out a gun. The downside is that they're clearly a best combo for every gun. I'm not upset when when something is stronger than everything else but with with the prevalence on TikTok and YouTube guides there are always those videos that'll be the this build is overpowered and some cod goblin will say man this gun will solve all your problems in game so you can go focus on wondering why you're parents got divorced or something like that. Overall, minor gripes, minor problems, but the pretty fleshed out system is nice to play. If the gunsmith system is Kevin Spacey, the perk system is like Kevin Spacey after he found out he touched kids. Advanced warfare. 
What I mean by that is why the hell don't I have all my perks at the start of the game? I was really hoping that they were going to bring back pro perks like they did back in the dinosaur days, and I hate the fact that I have to play the game for a while before I even get all my perks, like cold blooded and ghost. Along with the footsteps being loud as hell, ghost is the only perk that will somewhat conceal you. This is coming from a stealth goblin class gamer, so take it as you will, but I am kind of sad that it takes forever to get your ultimate perk. Even saying that sounds cringe. Not a fan of the perk system, especially since we have seen much better ones in different games. It's definitely the most disappointing part in the creative class system. Not much to say here. Some of them are stronger than others, and all the grenades are solid. The breaching charge grenade is clearly the best one for most objective based matches, but all of them seem viable. And why the fuck are throwing knives locked into in the late level 50s? I feel it feels like a sin, it honestly does. Philip Graves are back and they seem a bit better now. They're kind of like a mini kill streak with some of them, and classics like portable radar and camera are back and are fun and actually not that bad. But why don't they make Dead Silence a perk again? This makes me very angry. <laughs> Finally, before we talk about the maps and movement, I want to take a quick shout out to our boy, the score streak slash kill streaks. Now, they have a lot of kill streaks in this game, quite a bit. I'm very happy about that because there was kind of a lack of diversity in some of the kill streaks in Modern Warfare 2019. So I'm really happy they kind of came back at it, double fisted it with a ton of new kill streaks. Um, the recon drone RCXD thing is pretty epic. And the fact that you can change it from kill streaks to score streaks makes people not complain because either they're objective goblins or they're running around sitting in corners and camping well either way you can still get your kill streaks which i think is an amazing change to the game the maps may be the most important thing in multiplayer in any cod game and i'm happy to say that this one's not as bad as past gods there are a couple stinkers i'm looking at you to rock and santa santa border i don't give a fuck who you are i hate you but i cannot complain with the maps all together. Alba Gra, for example, somehow reminds me of a Black Ops 1 map Hanoi. I'm, I don't know why I'm choosing the most difficult maps to pronounce, and I'm just saying this on the spot, but I, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I am. Uh, due to its various camping locations and its hot zones. So that was the finish to my thought, apparently. Uh, the feeling of these maps have a solid flow, and although the spawn system is well far from perfect, it's still in a good place. People move around slower, thank God, and slight canceling out of the game, thank God, part two. This naturally slows down twitchy movements and gives the more casual boomer like myself the chance to compete. Reload canceling is out of the game as well, for better or for worse. And now there's dolphin diving, I guess? Uh, jump and drop shotting feels solid without being overly abusive and feels like old cod again. Kill times are fast too, which can be frustrating, but again, the guns are all competitive, which is cool. The lackluster launch is pitiful, with no hardcore mode in the game, along with some of the fan favorite game modes like Demolition and Capture the Flag. This is really disappointing and I'm, I really hope that they start adding some of these game modes soon. Hopefully this game can get resurrected with the first season, and many new things will be added, like competitive play. And I'm tired of dealing with these TTV chimps because I, I accidentally go positive in one of my games. Quick side note, skill based matchmaking is still in the game, and I still definitely hate it, and I definitely still feel it. That being said, it's not as strong as it was in Cold War and Modern Warfare 2019 at launch, and although I'm not happy with skill based matchmaking altogether, it feels a little bit lower than what it feels a little less heinous than what it used to be. In the end, we waited and wished for it to be like the past, and in some ways, it certainly is. Guns are strong, maps are solid, and customization is big. That being said, it has some shortcomings that will hopefully be fixed in the near future. The game looks bright, I'm excited, you guys subscribe, end of story, bye bye, see you later. Oh. What's up? Hey, don't worry, the, the, the javelins be staying on that point. What the fuck point. is happening to this guy? <laughs> Do you see this? Vince, you see this guy? Fine news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen.